Hello everyone. Welcome back to the discussion on SSO in ADFS. In our last video, we discussed about the metadata in ADFS. We discussed about setting up an identity provider in service now using this metadata and the Java key store. We also discussed about generating a signed metadata from the IDP for ADFS. The next step is to create a relying party for service now in the ADFS. For this, the AD admin would navigate to ADFS. It'd be then going to the Lang Party Trust folder. Within this folder, we'll click on Add Lang Party Trust. A dialog box opens where you can set up a Lang Party for service now. We'll select the option as Claims Aware and click on Start. It would take us to our next dialog where we have three different options. We can either specify a URL for your metadata. We can also import the metadata. We can also enter the detail manually. Since we have exported the metadata from service now, we'll be importing it in ADFS. So I'll select the second option. I'll then browse and upload my metadata from the desktop. So I'll select my metadata and click next. I need to give a name for my lying party which I would name as service now there would be many other lying party within your ADFS later to other applications after entering the name I click next I need to select an access control policy as to permit everyone will be granting access to everyone to use this lying party then I'll click on next again I'll click on next and I will close this dialog box. Once the dialog is closed, your lying party setup is complete. If you double click on it, you can see the properties related to this lying party. If I go to the signature tab, you can see a certificate which is related to the SAML certificate we just generated in service now. If you go to your endpoints, you can see the different endpoints related to service now, logout and consumer endpoints. All these information are imported from the ServiceNow metadata. One thing that you can do is to go to the advanced tab and change the secure hash algorithm to SHA1 since this is what we use in ServiceNow and then click on apply. The next step is to issue a claim policy for the lying party. In order to add a claim policy, I would right click the lying party. I would edit claim issue and policy. I would be entering two different claim rules here. The first rule is to fetch attributes from the LDAP. So you need to select the claim rule as send LDAP attributes as claim. Click on next. I need to give a name for this claim rule. I would name it as fetch email address. I can fetch any attribute from the LDAP. It can be the user ID or the email address, whichever is unique. So if I click on this drop down, I can see a list of attributes from the LDAP. Uh, you could see the SAM account name, which would be the login ID or the user name in service now. For now, I would be selecting the email address. I need to then select the outgoing claim type as email address. This is just indicating a type of your claim rule. After selecting it, I also need to select the attribute store as Active Directory and click Finish. I've created my first claim rule here, which is to fetch email address. The next step is to create a second claim rule, which would transform this information from LDAP and pass it over to the lying party. For this, I would add my second rule, which would be to transform the claim. I'll be transforming an incoming claim here. Select this option, click on next. I need to then provide a name for this claim rule. I would enter the name as transform the LDAP claim. I need to select the incoming claim type as email address. This was the outgoing claim type which we selected in our previous claim. So I select this option as email address. I also need to enter an outgoing claim type. We'd be selecting it as name ID for now. 
and also the outgoing name id for matt as email these are few specific attributes related to the claim rules uh, few specific types and format associated to map the claim information from ldap to service now then i would click on finish this would be adding my second claim and then i apply my claim rules we have now completed setting up the line party trust and a claim issuance policy for the line party the next step is to test the connectivity between service now and adfs for this i'll navigate to my identity provider within my instance i'll open my identity provider for adfs and then i'll click on test connection this will redirect me to my adfs login page what happens at the background is that ServiceNow would create a SAML request for authentication. ServiceNow would then sign the SAML request with a certificate using the Java key store and then redirect user to the login page of ADFS. I will now enter my credentials to access AD. I'll enter my domain name first and then my user ID and then I'll input my password and click on sign in it will then redirect you to a test connection page here you can see that we have successfully connected with ad it performs a test for both the authentication and logout after authentication from ad it sends a saml response back to service now service now would then decrypt the information using the ad certificate if a matching user profile is found in the claims then the user would be redirected to his profile or else he would be locked out from the instance. Since we have performed a successful connection test, I would be activating my IDP here. I will navigate down to my connection results and then click on the activate button. This would activate my IDP. You can also see that my IDP is set as the auto redirect IDP. This means that whenever a user tries to access the instance URL, it would be automatically redirected to the EDFS login page instead of the instance login page. I would also want to give a mention about the name ID policy. If you remember, while setting up the second claim rule, we have given the name ID format as email address and this is where it gets mapped to. Let's now test this connection with our instance. I'll open a new browser window to log into my instance. So I would enter the instance URL. You can see that the instance is automatically redirecting to my ADFS login page here. I'll enter my credentials for AD. And then I'll enter my password here. Click on sign in. You can see that I'm successfully redirecting my instance to my user profile i'll also now try to log out from this and then i click on the log out option you can again see i've been successfully log out if i try to enter my instance url again you can see i am automatically redirect to my adfs login page the log out option worked because we had checked the signed log out in our idp if we didn't check that, what would happen is the user session would be retained in the browser and whenever user clicks on logout, he would not actually log out from the instance and the session remains. If I try to click on the instance URL again, I won't be redirected to my login page. Instead, I would be directly redirected to my instance. The last thing that I would discuss in this video is about debugging the ADFS issues. For this, you need to come back to your ADFS application, go to your properties. You need to make sure that you have enabled the debug logging for your SSO. This is a powerful login feature. Every time a user tries to log in ServiceNow through AD, all the related logs are saved in the system logs when you check this property. Let's see the corresponding logs related to my authentication. For this, I'll go to my system logs. I'll search for SAML in the source so I can get all the related logs. 
if there are any issue associated with your ADFS the corresponding error message would be displayed in your log you can see the SAML response here if I open the SAML response you can see all the details which are sent back by AD here if I navigate down to the SAML response you can also see my email address which is sent in the name ID format here so if I search for my email address at admin at example.com you can see my email address is sent from the LDAP in my SAML response here if I go to my LDAP directory and if I open my user profile within LDAP I can see that my email address is also updated as admin at example.com this is what is being fetched by my claim policy and sent back in my SAML response which you can see in my system logs here if I go to my user profile from here this is the same email address which I have on my user profile and ServiceNow would be redirecting me to my profile based on this email address field there is a knowledge article which is provided by ServiceNow High which lists out the common SAML errors and corresponding fixes if you look into this list you can see one of the error which says failure to check the validity of certificate the reason for this would be your current certificate might have expired and the solution is to replace your certificate so all related errors associated with SSO and their corresponding fixes or resolution can be found in this article I will share this article link in the description well that's it for now thank you all for watching